All right, so German drinking culture, huh? Yeah. Yeah, you guys send in some lyrics that really go us thinking. Like, is there more to it than just, you know, Big Steins and Oktoberfest sing-alongs? Hmm, interesting. This isn't just some party playlist. This is a deep dive, people. We're talking a full-on boozy ballad here, name-dropping everything from Doppelkorn. Wait, hold on, Johnny Walker, too. Klosterfrau Melissengeist. It's like they raided a global liquor cabinet, all in the name of uh, someone named Peter Alexander. <laughs> So grab a metaphorical stein, everyone, because this is going to be good. I do love a good lyrical analysis. You know, music, it's more than just melodies, right? It's a glimpse into a culture's soul. And in this case, we're not just looking at what Germans drink, but what those drinks tell us about how they think about, well, having a good time. In this song, let me tell you, it doesn't hold back. Yeah. It's like a shopping list for a seriously well-stocked party. Yeah. Like one Jägermeister, two Hennessy, don't forget the Melissengeist. Mm -hmm. Almost like a badge of honor, how many different drinks they can squeeze in. That's an interesting thought. On one hand, yeah, it could be about embracing variety, a more globalized taste, right? Not just sticking to the classics, but branching out. But you're right, it's not exactly about savoring the taste, is it? No, not really. More like, we're here to party, and we're not picky. Exactly. Which, okay, kind of fits the whole Oktoberfest image, I guess. But then there's lines like, hold on, let me find it. Das kann sie jetzt noch mal von vor. The whole thing again from the start. Exactly. And then, you're doing directly, I was Ryan. We're really putting everything in. Okay, are we picking up on a theme here? It's definitely not subtle, is it? And yeah, you're right to connect it to things like Oktoberfest. It's become this symbol of, like, a really enthusiastic approach to celebration, let's say. Enthusiastic might be an understatement. Because this song, it also gets kind of, well blunt about the after effects. Right, like it's not shying away from the messier side of things. Yeah, we're talking lines about being too drunk to walk, even a your cuts and shun, we're already throwing up. It's certainly vivid, to say the least. And that's where it gets really interesting, I think, because you have these boasts about drinking everything under the sun, right? But there's also this layer of like dark humor woven in, almost like they're acknowledging the potential consequences, but they're not exactly shying away from them either. It's like they're saying, yeah, it might get messy, but that's part of the fun. Mm -hmm. A self-aware hangover waiting to happen. Maybe that's the German spirit. So we've got this mix of global and local drinks, a focus on quantity over quality, a celebration of excess, and a, a pretty dark sense of humor about the whole thing. But there's one big piece of the puzzle we haven't even touched yet. Oh, you mean... This mysterious Peter Alexander character. Right. Who is this guy, and why is everyone partying so hard in his honor? Seriously. The lyrics keep saying, Wir haben Grund zum Feiern. We have a reason to celebrate, and it always seems to come back to this Peter Alexander fellow. It's, it's like he's the life of the party, the guest of honor at this uh, unique celebration. To figure out who he is, though, we might need to do some digging. A little cultural detective work is in order. I am always up for a good mystery. And lucky for us, we've got whole songs worth of clues to unravel. It's true, we don't have a picture of this Peter Alexander guy, do we? Just the lyrics and our imaginations. But hey, that's half the fun, right? Right. So, thinking about it, this Peter Alexander character, he could be a local hero, a fictional character. Heck, maybe he's just a stand-in for any reason to party. Like, it's Tuesday. Peter Alexander would want us to drink. Exactly. But the fact that he's there at all inspiring this level of, shall we say, enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. It tells us something about how drinking fits into the whole social fabric. So it's not just about the drinks themselves, it's about having a shared experience, a reason to, you know, come together and really let loose. Right, think about it. Almost every culture has its own drinking rituals, songs, occasions. Certain drinks are practically mandatory. Oh yeah, you can't have a St. Patrick's Day without a Guinness. Right, exactly. And it's not random, you know? These things, they reinforce a sense of community, of belonging. Like, we're all in this together, might as well raise a glass to that. Precisely. And in this song, Peter Alexander, whoever he is, he's that unifying factor, you know? He's the excuse to let go a little, enjoy the moment. It's like, cheers to Peter Alexander. May our steins never be empty. Just like that. Right. And within that collective experience, there's this sort of leveling effect. Everyone's singing. Everyone's drinking. Individual anxieties fade away. You know? It's just about the group, the shared experience. Exactly. Think about the structure of drinking songs. They're meant to be sung together in rounds, everyone joining in. Creates a powerful feeling, I bet. It really does. But, you know, as fun as this all sounds, I can't help but notice this, like, tension in the lyrics. On one hand, joyful communal celebration. On the other hand, 
bragging about excess, like things getting out of control. Yeah, it's not exactly promoting responsible drinking, is it? <laughs> exactly. That's a good observation. And it gets to the heart of the matter. If we're looking for a single easy answer about German drinking culture, well, we're not going to find it. Culture is messy like that. Exactly. What we do have is a snapshot, a particular attitude, a set of behaviors, maybe celebratory, maybe a little more complicated. So how do we make sense of it all then? Is this song celebrating over-the-top drinking? Or is it, like, subtly critiquing it? That's the million-dollar question, right? And without the songwriter here to give us a lecture... Which would be a different kind of podcast. Right. It's up to us, the listeners, to decide. We're the jury and the song's on trial. Exactly. So, guilty of being a party anthem, or is there a deeper message here? Hmm, I like that. Because that ambiguity, that tension... Between celebration and, well, the morning after... It's not a bug, it's a feature. Okay, I've never thought about it like that. It makes us think about the complexities. Of drinking culture, yeah. Not all beer halls and sing-alongs. There's always more to it, isn't there? Always. It's like we're digging through these layers. Right? Layers of lyrics, layers of meaning. Exactly. And the deeper we go, the more we realize it's not just about, like, how much beer someone can drink. It's about what that beer represents. The why behind the stein. Exactly. Yeah. We're talking about identity, community. Even a little introspection, maybe? Right. Because this song, even without knowing all the details, it makes us think about the role of alcohol everywhere. Not just Germany, but, like, globally. Yeah, it's universal in a way. It can be social, ritualistic. Sometimes a little too much of a good thing. And those contradictions, they're what make it so interesting to unpack. Don't they? Because, let's be real, we see it in our own lives, too. We celebrate with a toast, unwind with a drink. But that line between enjoyment and excess? Yeah, it's always there, isn't and it? And th that line looks different for everyone. What I find so fascinating about this song is that it captures that ambiguity perfectly. It doesn't try to give us a straight answer, does it? Nope. It just holds up a mirror. To German drinking culture. To our own relationship with alcohol, even. Which is way more interesting than just saying Germans like to party, right? Way more. It reminds us that culture is alive. It's fluid, ever-changing. And sometimes, the most unexpected things. Like a song about downing every liquor imaginable. Can spark some really insightful conversations. Couldn't have said it better myself. So as we reach the bottom of our metaphorical stein here, what's the one thing you want our listeners to walk away with? Oh, that's easy. Never underestimate the power of a good song. It can tell us so much. It can be a time capsule, a confession, a reflection of society. And in this case, a reminder that the best answers... Often lie somewhere in the gray areas. Between the cheers and the hangover. Exactly. I like that. Well, on that note, we'll leave you with this. Is this song just a party anthem? Or is there something more bubbling beneath the surface? Something to think about, maybe over your next drink. Cheers to that. Cheers. And thanks for joining us on another deep dive.